So consider this. What if the dinosaurs had never gone extinct? Well then, the Flintstones would be a reality show then, huh? Alright. About 66 million years ago, an asteroid the size of Mount Everest, traveling at 45,000 miles per hour, hit what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The impact started a catastrophic chain of events that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs, which had dominated the planet for 160 million years. It also pretty much ruined vacations for the tourists in Cancun. So, if it hadn't been for this asteroid wiping out the competition, mammals probably wouldn't have had a chance to rise and evolve. Hey, that means us humans! Uh-oh. So, that begs the question. What if that asteroid had missed? What would the Earth look like today if dinosaurs were still alive? Well, before we take a look at this dinosaur-filled world, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications so that you'll always be the first to see our daily updates. Now, just to be clear, this isn't a Jurassic Park scenario I'm throwing at you. The dinosaurs in those movies have been brought back to life and thrust into the 21st century. Whereas here, we're talking about dinosaurs never having died out in the first place. Alright, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's take a look. First and foremost, we need to lay down some background information. Dinosaurs existed in the late Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods during the Mesozoic era, which encompassed 180 million years. That, of course, happened right before the Classical period with Mozart and Beethoven. Well, not really. Earth at that time had a very warm climate with mild seasonal changes and no polar ice. The supercontinent Pangaea had only just started to break down into smaller land masses that would, millions of years later, become the seven continents we know today. It's estimated that there were nearly 2,500 dinosaur species in the Mesozoic era that came in all shapes and sizes. Some herbivores grew to be nearly 110 feet long, weighed 100 tons, and needed to eat about 300 pounds of food a day. These numerous species lived all across the globe, and the asteroid that destroyed their world affected them all in different ways depending on where they were. This infamous asteroid, basically an enormous space rock, became a fireball when confronted with friction and gravity in the Earth's atmosphere, and it collided with a force of 100 million megatons. The impact blasted debris into the air at 100,000 miles per hour, exploded 80 cubic miles of the Earth's crust from the ground, and triggered a massive 11.1 .1 earthquake that rippled out in seismic waves from the Yucatan Peninsula to the Pacific Northwest. Wow, talk about packing a punch! And if that weren't enough, the air temperature skyrocketed to a whopping 600 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to suck the moisture right out of all the surrounding vegetation and even boil the water in the skin of the dinosaurs closest to the blast zone. Winds strong enough to rip through flesh and toss 30-ton animals around like dolls gusted through the air in waves. Oh, and all of this happened in just 5 minutes. Next… oh, there's more? Yep. 70 billion tons of dust and ash from the collision filled the upper atmosphere. Moving at an astounding 10,000 miles per hour, this cloud spread from modern-day Mexico to cover the rest of the world, trapping an unrelenting heat beneath it. Static electricity charged up an electrical storm that caused fiery hail to rain down on the animals that didn't get wiped out at ground zero. As the temperatures continued to rise, wildfires, powerful enough to generate their own winds, blazed through once lush valleys and forests at 9 miles per hour burning at 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, just so you know, that's hot enough to melt solid aluminum. Smaller species living in the western hemisphere were able to survive the heat underground. But the big guys, like the Triceratops and T. rex, were baked alive. 8,000 miles away in modern-day Mongolia, a dust superstorm suffocated any animals out in the open. That world-encompassing cloud we mentioned earlier kept temperatures too high to sustain plants for the few remaining herbivores to eat. 
A series of tsunamis with waves towering at 300 feet high ravaged nearly 13,000 miles of coast. Shockwaves from the massive earthquake continued for months, ripping tectonic plates apart like pieces of paper. Molten rock forced its way through the newly formed fractures in the Earth, and dormant volcanoes were violently awoken with huge eruptions that expelled even more dust and debris into the deadly cloud already surrounding the globe. This cloud had now gotten to be a few miles thick, preventing the sun's rays from reaching the surface. What did surface, though, was a number of toxic gases, including hydrogen sulfide, which paralyzed the lungs and suffocated the few dinosaurs left at this point. Any remaining dinosaurs that managed to survive all of this starved to death, from the way their ecosystem had been so severely devastated. Because of that, they all had completely died out about three months after the asteroid collision. Contemporaries of the dinosaurs, like insects, early aquatic reptiles and birds, smaller mammals and fish managed to survive by burrowing themselves in trees, deep underground, or underwater. Simpler organisms like mold and fungus thrived in the desolate landscape. The indestructible fern made a comeback once the sun's energy was able to penetrate the omnipresent dust cloud. Over thousands of years, these ferns grew into forests, which literally breathed new life into the planet. They produced oxygen and gave mammals the conditions to eat, breed, and evolve into the 10,000 species we see today. Now finally, the big question. Did you click the subscribe button already? Oh, wrong question. Here it is. What if all of that didn't happen? Let's explore our options. The asteroid could have continued on its path without getting sucked in by the Earth's gravitational pull, missing the planet completely, and letting the dinosaurs live out the rest of their natural lives in peace. Or it could have crashed into the ocean instead of on land. The water would have absorbed the energy of the impact much better, so the chain of events that followed wouldn't have been so devastating. No building-sized chunks of debris falling from the sky, no heat-trapping and sun-blocking dust cloud, and no volcanic eruptions. The tsunamis most likely would have been worse, flooding coasts and certainly racking up a high death toll, but they probably wouldn't have managed to wipe out entire species. It's unlikely that the resulting earthquake would have been an 11.1 magnitude, but it would have been powerful enough to do some major damage. These scenarios leave the possibility of the dinosaurs living and continuing to evolve. Had this happened, it would have been virtually impossible for any of the early mammals to survive long enough to build to the numbers we have today. Most of them in the Mesozoic area were just rodent-sized carnivores that hardly ever got to be the size of a cat. Despite being predators, they were still prey to larger carnivores. Not even their fast breeding would have been able to increase their populations quickly enough to make them a dominant class. Humans and related primates would, in all likelihood, not exist were it not for that ill-fated asteroid. Ooh, lucky for us! Not to mention, the animals that descended from dinosaurs, like crocodiles, lizards, snakes, turtles, and birds, would probably look much more like their ancestors than they do currently. In the purely hypothetical situation, where dinosaurs never went extinct, their brains would have continued to adapt and evolve along with their bodies. Most species of dinosaur had a relatively small brain-to-body ratio. And even though the larger dinos had proportionately large brains, they still couldn't complete any complex functions. Most paleontologists agree that the Trodon was the smartest dinosaur. It had a body about the size of a human's, a brain the size of an avocado pit, and an intelligence level on par with modern birds. It was already using visual and auditory signals in the late Cretaceous period. So just imagine what it would have become if it were given millions of years to develop. It might today have a job on Wall Street. Some scientists say that the dinosaur's numbers had already been steadily declining for thousands of years before the asteroid hit so they may have died out on their own without a mass extinction event. 
but this would have happened over a much longer period of time than the few months following the catastrophic impact. So there's no telling how the timeline for the rise of mammals would have been affected. It may still have happened, but a lot of variables could have stacked up the wrong way. For instance, the environment might not have suited early mammal populations, and they might not have been able to adapt quickly enough. Most early mammals were carnivores, and the insect population at that time might not have been enough to sustain them. The mammals could easily have had the same fate as the dinosaurs, with birth rates slowly decreasing over millions of years until life would have to start all over again. But life finds a way, and something, if not dinosaurs or mammals, would have managed to survive. Of course, we'll never know if any of this is true. But it's always fun to speculate. So, what do you think the world would be like if dinosaurs were still around? Would the planet be better off? Would we have to dodge large mountains of dinosaur poop while driving to work? Would Fred Flintstone finally get a raise down at the rock quarry? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Give this video a like if you learned something cool from it, share it with other people who will probably enjoy it too. And always remember to stay on the bright side of life.